<laughs> hey guys, what's up? Fragrance Matt here, how are you all doing? Um, I just want to say apologies, I just thought I'd write this, you know, little thing just to let you guys know what I was doing, so yeah, hope you're all doing very, very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds until a few more people come into the live stream and then we'll uh, have a chat. Sound good? Awesome. So I've just made myself a hot drink. Sort of just chilling out. You know, it's been a very hot day today, so I'm uh, trying to keep cool, if you know what I mean. Because um, here in the UK, we don't have air conditioning, so we have to sort of think of ways to keep ourselves cool, you know. It's it's not easy, put it that way. It's just because, you know, we're simply not used to hot weather, so, you know, we, you know, we just have to do it ourselves, I guess. So, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Just want to say a big thank you guys for, uh, well, for those who have watched my newest review, uh, which is of course on Paul Smith's Sunshine. Amazing fragrance, guys. Honestly, it's amazing. It's been my scent of the day. I'm actually wearing it right now and Still going quite strong. Still going quite strong. And that's great for a fresh scent, you know? It's the famous tripod that Fragrance Matt uses to record his episodes. It's broken! <laughs> like, two of the legs have these little ball things on, but one of them's missing, so... I need to get another one. It only cost me like a pound, so... You know, you pay for what you get. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, might as well work on this, actually. Hey, David! What's up? Good to hear from you. Uh, yeah, we're doing really, really good, thanks. Um, Getting by, that's all I can really say, you know. Paul Smith's store in Los Angeles is famous for having a pink wall. Pink wall? Really? That's interesting. I didn't actually know that. That's really cool. Learn something new every day, don't you? It's getting quite dark here, um, which is quite good. I like it when it gets dark. I'll show you guys, actually. Um... Yeah, so it's not quite dark. This is the view from my window, so... Uh, yeah, it's not much to look at, to be honest. But, uh... <laughs> it's my bedroom at the end of the day, so... Yeah. And if you're... A lot of you, by the way, uh, if a lot of you are wondering about um, my entire collection fragrance video, um, it will be coming. I'm just trying to find the right time to really do it. So... Couple of weeks, I think. Once I get a few more fragrances reviewed and you know, once I'm you know, fully cracked, I'll get there. That shirt is so awful, it's great. What do you mean? It's a good shirt? Nothing wrong with this. Nah, it's it is, you're right. It's very um Yeah, it's, I mean it's it's good for summer, I guess, but uh Whatever. You know, I think depending on like seasons and stuff, you know, like for summer I tend to wear like really bright colors. I don't know if anybody else seems to do that, but uh, you know, summer's a hot, you know, summer is a really hot season, especially over here. So, you know, I want to make sure that I wear something to at least brighten my day up. 
Carlos, what's up? How are you doing, my friend? How are you doing? Thank you so much for coming into my live stream again. I really appreciate it. Natalie, how are you doing? It's a jazzy one, isn't it? Nothing, nothing wrong with it, really, is there? Be honest. <laughs> I mean, it's not one of my best shirts ever, but it's, it's a shirt at the end of the day. I don't think you guys would approve if I, you know, did a live stream completely topless now, would you? Would you? Yeah, I thought so. Um, nah. But, um, yes, uh, I hope you guys are having a great summer. Um, today has been a very warm one. So, I'm, you know, I've just been sort of, like, enjoying the weather, really, as it's, you know, as it's been there. I'm just trying to make advantage of it, you know, because it's not really often I'm really outside of the house, you know. Uh, you guys might think it, but I really don't. I don't really get out that much, so... Thank you very much, Carlos. And yeah, no problem. I will not do a topless stream. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. It, it it means a lot to me to to know that there's people out there who would come into my streams and you know would care to watch me. So that that's a big deal for me. So you know I really do appreciate that. And I'm sure there's a lot more people like that as well. So yeah. And if you guys are wondering what my scent of the day is, of course it is the fragrance that I recently just reviewed, which is. Of course, Paul Smith's Sunshine. It's an amazing fragrance. Like, seriously, it's it's a great, great fragrance. Marco, how you doing? CK All. Yeah, I've heard of that fragrance. I, I haven't unfortunately tried it. Um, I've tried my best to, to find it, uh, like around a few stores here in the UK, but sadly I've had no luck. And I think... I don't know why it is, because, you know, there's a lot of people, like, on my Instagram account, there's a lot of people, you know, really talking about it, and they own it in their collection, and I've had to talk to them a few times to really find out about it and stuff, but I don't know, it's very rare in the UK, at least, like, in the Northeast it is. I don't really know about anywhere else, but I would love to try it. I've heard it's a good fragrance, although... Uh, a good friend of mine on my Instagram account actually said that it wasn't really that impressive. So I don't really know what to believe, but, you know, opinions are opinions at the end of the day, and I am willing to try the fragrance if I ever get the chance, or if I ever get a bottle, then I'll obviously get myself a bottle. But I have heard good things, and I have heard bad things about it, so to be honest with you, I don't really know um, what to think. So, your personality is what sells your channel. Oh, Carlos, thank you so thank you so much. I really appreciate that. At the end of the day, if you're gonna have a YouTube channel, you know, don't just dedicate it to what you do. At least, you know, be yourself. You know, and that that's exactly what I want to do. So yeah, and I'm sure you guys are the same. So talking about Paul Smith, he was born in Beeston, England, literally five twenty minute drive. Really, I didn't know that. That's Ten minutes. Oh well, that's that's still good. I mean, well, I didn't actually know. I mean, obviously, I knew he was English, but I didn't know he was like, you know, from Nottingham. You know, I thought it might have been somewhere like London or something, because you know, the, the, I think the headquarters for Paul Smith are stationed in London. Then again, London is the capital city, so you know, makes perfect sense. But um, whatever. So I bought Atimo because of you. Smells like a chef wooden spice shelf. I like it. I layer it with Kenneth Cole's signature. They really complement each other. Atimo Black is very different. Nah. Uh, I've seen Atimo Black in um, Debenhams, actually, which is a department store here in the UK. And it's it's going for like 30 to 30, 40 quid. And I'm like, really? Considering the original bottle that I own, I only paid like $15 for it when I was in the States. So... Yeah, we live in a funny world with funny prices, don't we? But yeah, that sounds awesome. Like, because I've smelled Kenneth Cole's signature and it is a very pleasing scent. So I can definitely imagine Atimo going quite well with that because Atimo's longevity is atrocious. It only lasts for about an hour and then completely fades to a skin scent, which isn't good for any fragrance. But when it's for a fragrance that smells insanely good, it's insanely disappointing at the same time, you know? So, sweet, musky, bland, and doesn't last. Yeah, I found that. Like, it's, it, it's a bit generic. There's not much really to it, is there? Yeah, that's that's what I found. But, at the end of the day, fragrances are free. Like, you you get good ones and you get bad ones, you know? That's the thing with the, the world of fragrance, so, yeah. 
Well, thanks. You say Nottingham is too poor for designers? <laughs> Only joking. And yeah, we have Paul Smith factory shop, but now it's a community center. Oh, okay. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm basically just um, saying, you know, I thought that he was from uh, somewhere else, that's all. Because, you know, um, I think I've seen a few interviews with him and he, he sounds like he's from London, so that's kind of the main reason why I thought that. But whatever. Uh, Kenneth Cole is like cucumbery and Atimo spices it. Ooh. Yeah, I remember smelling Kenneth Cole's signature and it did have a very, like, fresh smell. So I can imagine it's going very, very well together, to be honest. So that sounds like a really good combo. Like, really, really good. I have a few combos myself. Um, I'm thinking about doing a video on them, actually. I don't... I don't know if anyone else has these combos or not, but sometimes I like, I actually enjoy layering two to three fragrances at the same time. So you might be thinking, really? That sounds a bit cloying, but no, it, it actually does work. And I think, you know, when you do get more than maybe two or three fragrances, they have to contrast, you know, they have to go well together. If they don't, then you're just going to smell like crap, you know? So at the end of the day, you've got to wear what smells right to you at the end of the day, yeah? David, have you tried Vintage Polo Sport? Mr. Matt Say found a bottle for 20. <sighs> I, you know what it is? I don't know where Matt finds these deals. He, he's got so many amazing fragrances in his collection, right? And he's actually told me how much he's paid for some of them. And I've been like, ah, get away. Seriously? It's amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. Um, you know, considering like I've paid a decent am amount of money for, you know, some of my vintage scents, like my 30ml bottle of Balenciaga Pour Hong, uh, I think was about $37. So that's a lot of money, but thankfully I got it as a Christmas gift. So I was, you know, I'm still very grateful for that. But I think I paid £35 for my bottle of uh, Ferio by Jacques Bogart, and that's a 30ml bottle. So yeah, um, it all depends on when you look and being lucky. And Matt's just really good at that, you know, I have to give it to him. He's very, very good at that. Yes, do a combo. Bulgari Black and Ferragamo F Black. Hmm, that sounds good. I love Bulgari Black, although I haven't smelled Ferragamo F Black. In fact, the other day I actually just bought a, a, a new Ferragamo fragrance. I'm absolutely in love with it. You guys might like it too. It's called um, Aqua Essentiale Colonia. Absolutely amazing fragrance. I'm not kidding. The whole Yesterday, the whole day, like my room stunk of that fragrance. It's the It's one of the freshest cleanest fragrances, one of the most sexiest smells I've ever smelled, seriously. It's so beautiful, I would highly recommend people try it. In fact, I'll be doing a review on that one soon, because it is amazing, it's so good. Hey, see me, how are you doing? I hope you're doing really well. Carlos, Aqua Essentiale and Prada Amber. Ooh, that sounds like a very good combo when I think about it, because obviously Prada is, Prada Amber, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. And I can just imagine, you know, the, the original Aqua Essentiale being very aquatic and then contrasting very nice with the Amber. It would be really, really nice, but I'm definitely gonna have to do a video on layering, layering and stuff. I'm gonna have to. It's a must. It's a must. I have to do it. Yeah, I think after I've done this live stream, I'll probably go for a shower, and then when I get out, I'm thinking about wearing another fragrance. But I don't really know what. <laughs> Jesse Boot, the owner, founder of Boots. He was born in Nottingham too. Uh, was he? I've never, I've never actually heard of Jesse Boot, <laughs> um, but it makes sense. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, I, I I love hearing things like that because you know, obviously Boots is a very famous store here in the UK. You know, obviously, Natalie, you know that because you're from the UK, but for the people who aren't in the UK right here, you know, Boots is a very famous sort of pharmacy and chemist, that sort of place. In fact, I bought quite a few fragrances from uh, from Boots, but it's very expensive. Very expensive, to be honest. But, you know, some places have to make money, don't they? Ugh. Got seven people with me now, that's pretty cool. In fact, guys, you should let me know what your scent of the days are, because I would love to know. Because obviously I've told you guys my scent of the day, uh, which is, of course, um, brain fart. Paul Smith sunshine. God, I don't even know what the hell's the matter with me. Um, crazy. 
Some boots products are sold in some drugstores in the US. Are they really? Are they allowed to do that? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't even think they're allowed to do that. Zara Noble Amber Laird with Balasarini Ombre. See? More fragrances I need to check out. <laughs> Especially Bola Serini. Like, I've heard so many good things about that. In fact, there's a fragrance by Bola Serini that I really want to try. It's an aquatic fragrance. Oh, what's it called? I forgot what it's called. Here, when I can't forget the name of the fragrance. You're wearing Golan Ideal. Is that how you pronounce it? Okay. It sounds beautiful, though, Simi. It sounds really, really nice. Next time I go to the Golan counter, I'll definitely have to check it out. Because I... Love the House of Gelan. Historic house. Jay, how you doing, my good friend? <laughs> She's watching some shit film <laughs> on the horror channel. <laughs> I know the feeling. Oh my god, I know the feeling. It's like, it's the, 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 the most horrible movies you'll ever find. Oh, I know, I know what you're going through. You're wearing 24, set of the day 24, the fragrance. Okay, 24, is that the original? Uh, is that like the, I'm trying to think, because I've got one of the fragrances. It's, in fact, it smells a lot like Blue de Chanel. I don't know if it's the same one you're, what you're talking about, but yeah. You have to let me know. <laughs> but yeah, I do own one of the 24 fragrances and it's, it's okay. I actually gave it to my stepdad because I wasn't really too fond of it, but. I would love to get my hands on uh, 24 Gold because oh, I remember smelling that and it is literally a niche quality fragrance, but it's getting hard to find now. And it was always, um, it was always quite cheap, you know, you could get it in like the fragrance shop, the perfume shop here in the UK for like, I think it was only like 15 quid for like a 75 mil bottle, which was pretty good. But now that it's getting harder to find, the prices are just going to be ridiculous. So yeah. Yeah, the original with orange numbers in dark bowl. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not... I don't think it's the same one. The one I have has silver on it. It's like silver uh, metal. Um, and it also has blue juice. And it smells a lot like Blue de Chanel. Yeah. Six pounds in the fragrance shop for 50 mil. Yeah, I paid six pounds. 50 mil. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That'll be right. Byredo Pulp. Ooh. I think I've got a sample of that. I think. Or it might just be uh, Baudelaire. I've got Baudelaire. That's a really good one. Very nice sort of leathery, uh, musky scent. God, I wish I could afford niche fragrances, you know? They go for like, like some of them are ridiculous, like the prices, but, you know, what can you do? Hobbies, oh sorry, see me. Matt, have you heard of the new Chanel fragrance coming out called Gabrielle. I'm so excited to smell it. I have! I have heard of it, named after, you know, Coco herself. Yeah, I've, I have heard of it, but I don't know much about it. <laughs> so I hope they make it beautiful because Coco Chanel, like, in her younger days, uh, she was, to me, one of the most attractive women in the world, no doubt about it. I mean, she was still beautiful the older she got, no doubt about it, but... Um, yeah, like, if the fr the perfume itself just has to smell beautiful, it has to show her personality, and I really do hope that they don't just make a fragrance just for money, you know, I hope that it does smell unique and different, because it deserves to, because, you know, she was, she was a genius, she really was. Um, Carlos, hobbies besides perfumes and music? Ah, uh, not really. <laughs> no, I like, um... I like football, you know, I'm a, I, I enjoy playing a bit of football, like today I took my brother over to the field and we uh, we kicked the ball around, that was pretty fun. Um, what else do I do? I used to do acting, like I remember in school I used to do a lot of drama. Um, so yeah, that, that was pretty fun, but uh, yeah, I guess when I was 15, 16, fragrances took over my life and since then I've just sort of stuck with fragrances with music on the side, you know? Fragrances definitely are the main point of my life, and I wouldn't have it any other way if I'm honest with you, so. JD. P.S. I have stumbled onto the Zara Home Fragrance Range? Oh, Zara Home Fragrance Range. Apparently they are Zara's niche range. You heard of them? I have. Where they have one, two, and three? Yeah. Uh, the only one I like really is the first one. Uh, when I was at the Metro Center actually the other day, um, I was really impressed, but I didn't actually get it because in the in the end I ended up getting Aqua Essentiale Colonia instead. But I did go into Zara, you know, I did 
paid the store visit and I found some amazing scents, but nothing really new, so I didn't really get anything. But I'll probably end up getting myself the Zara Home One because it is a great fragrance, so uh, yeah. Uh, set of the day is a Zara Chrome. Keith, that's a great choice. I love a Zara Chrome. Gets a lot of hate in the community, but uh, to me, I think it's a very nice, fresh, uh, cotton like laundry type smell, really. It's very soft, but it does come across a bit brash in the opening, but uh, very, very nice. And to me, it does smell a lot. Like CK1. Don't know if you know that, Keith, but uh, that's, what, that's what I think, anyway. Um, Rob, if you want a good cheapie, try Bath & Body Works Mahogany Woods. Uh, for, from Bath & Works, oh, very good for a Bath & Body Works fragrance, sorry. It's on its way out, so grab it while you can. Oh, I've, again, another great fragrance which I've heard so much about. Unfortunately, I cannot access Bath & Body Works while here in the UK. The only time I can do it is if I'm ever back in the States. And it'll probably be discontinued by then because I'm going next year, so... Uh, yeah, which is quite crap, really. Hey, Sean, how you doing, buddy? Um, so good to hear from you. I'm so glad you came in. Um, guys, I know I said this last time, but um, Sean is a very good friend of mine. If you could please just, you know, give his channel a follow. He's the nicest guy in the world, seriously. He really deserves more followers than what he's got. He's only got eight. Come on, let's give him a few more. He's the nicest guy in the world. Um, his, he's just right here, Sean's Day. Seriously, the nicest guy you'll ever meet. Please give him a follow. Uh, hello, do you... Have you smelled vintage Bell Army? No, I haven't even smelled Bell Army in general, to be honest. Um, I've heard it's a really good fragrance, though. I've heard some very good things about it. Um, I actually own a fragrance that apparently smells very much like it. Um, called Ballet Masculine, which comes from the house of uh, Ballet of Switzerland, which is a Swiss... Uh, jewelry company I think I think they do like casual wear and stuff as well but uh, I actually own their original fragrance from 1984 and I've done a review on it but it was quite a while ago back in the days where I just constantly cringe at myself you know um, so yeah I haven't I haven't checked out Bell Army but I would love to love to is there a fragrance you don't like never seen you saying negatives I know the you value the art of perfumery I do yes that's exactly right I, I, I really do appreciate um, perfumes in general. I, you know, even if it doesn't smell good, I still appreciate it for what it is. But I just cannot get away with Paco Urban 1 million. I don't know what it is. I think the main reason I don't like it is because an old friend of mine used to wear it, but unfortunately I'm not friends with him anymore. There's a bit of history there. And uh, he used to wear it, so it kind of brings back bad memories. But not just that, it reminds me of a cheap bar, the smell of it. Like, you know when you go to a nightclub and it's just full of guys and it's really hot and sticky and sweaty in there and the only thing you can smell is one million? Like, that's what it reminds me of. It just reminds me of something not nice. Even though I do own um, a fragrance called Rapport Sport, which actually came out in the 90s and it smells a lot like one million, but it's not a clone of one million because it came out first, if, if that makes sense. So. I can appreciate that fragrance, and I do prefer it, if I'm honest, because it's a bit more of a sort of sporty, aquatic version, if you know what I mean. But great fragrance. Really, really like it. Uh, sorry, Matt, it's not actually from the Zara store. It's from the Zara Home Online. Oh, okay. They do a completely separate range of fragrances. We'll try to send you... Oh, okay. Please do. I've never heard of those. Never heard of them. I mean, I probably have when I see it, but so far, i never heard of it. Please do that, Jay. I would really appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, thanks to you, I've bought the Zara Tea Collection. Oh, awesome, Marco. Which one was it? Was the what? Was it the one that I reviewed? Was it um, Tea Wood? Because if it is, it's a great fragrance. Great fragrance. In fact, anyone who's tried that fragrance, I don't know about you guys, but I find it very, very similar to Al Rahab Sultan. I don't know if you you really get that either. I do find it quite similar to Sultan. Very nice scent. Um, Tomorrow my birthday, I'll be 34. 34! Wow! Dude, you don't look 34, and I'm not just saying that, like, I thought you were younger. <laughs> Seriously. I wouldn't have said 34. But yeah, happy birthday for tomorrow. You'll definitely get, uh, you know, a, uh, a message from me. <laughs> and also, Sean, I just want to say a big thank you for doing that uh, video about me. I really, really appreciate that. That touched me so much um, that, honestly, like, it was one of the nicest things that, that anyone's ever done. So thank you, thank you so, so, so much, my friend. You're a legend. Um, I'm leaving, I'm sorry, take... Oh, so I keep on messing, messing you. Posts up, I'm sorry, guys. Happy birthday for tomorrow, Sean. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I'm leaving. I'm sorry. This is really nice of you, brother. Take care. Send of the night is Al Haramein Mystique Home. Ooh, that sounds good. Also, I wanted to applaud your support for Ben Daniels. You do a lot for your peers. <laughs> ben Daniel is Ben Daniels, I should say, is an amazing reviewer. Um, another guy who definitely deserves limelight. You know, it, it annoys me because there's so many talented reviewers out there, or just people who who are just so interesting when it comes to fragrances and they're just not known and you know it it really bothers me but hopefully it'll happen someday you know just word of mouth that's all it takes um where are we <laughs> uh okay jd will do but won't let me add link on this chat we'll try on your main page please do well you can send me a uh, private message that's totally fine as well uh, no problems at all Matt, I'm getting old, lol. Matt, you're, you're truly a legend. It's quite all right, buddy. Quite all right. I hope you uh, have a great night or day. I think it's daytime where you are now, isn't it? Um, but whatever. Uh, Bath and Body Works Mahogany is already discontinued and was being cleared out for $15. No way. $15? Oh. Shit. Oh, well. Hopefully I'll still find a bottle. <laughs> yeah, it was T word. I didn't open it yet, but I will. Please do, Marco. I think you'll really like it, buddy. It's a great fragrance. See me, I love it too. <laughs> uh, scent of the day, Prada Lome. Oh, good choice. I love Prada Lome. I need to get my hands on a bottle of that. It's just a bit pricey. It's a bit out of my price range at the moment, but I'm definitely gonna see if I can get it. <laughs> um, I have a question I would like to ask you. Yeah, Marco, go right ahead. Go right ahead, buddy. Positism, posit, positism, I can't even say that. <laughs> I can't even speak. <laughs> it's a very strong and powerful characteristic. Value that. Bye-bye, people. Bye, Carlos. Appreciate you coming in, buddy. Look after yourself. <laughs> uh, keep up the good work, Matt. You and Lex Alice are my favorite reviewers. 80 cent lovers like myself. Oh, wicked. Wicked, I appreciate that so much. Thank you so, so much, Rob. Uh, yeah, Lex is a great guy. Like, um, I would love to do a collaboration with Lex so badly. If you guys would like to see that happen, let Lex know, because I would like it to happen. <laughs> I haven't spoke, to, spoke about it with Lex. In fact, we, we tried to organize something um, a couple of months ago, actually, where we were gonna do a, uh, a video talking about Calvin Klein Obsession or just any fragrance in general, but it never happened. So it'd be really good, because I mean, he's only in Scotland, so it's only a drive up the road for me, but um, it'd be great if we could make it happen. It really would. Hello, Maria. Kisses from Argentina. Kisses from England, my dear. Thank you so much for coming in. I really appreciate that. So, yeah. Coffee break. Half an hour left, guys, of this live stream, and then I'm going for my shower. Any brandy in that? <laughs> I wish. Nah. <laughs> Check out Tonka Wood and Cure Velvet online if you can, if you can, I forgot to go. That should give you a link to Zara home niche fragrance range. I imagine when word gets out about these, prices will go up, yeah. I'm just trying to think. I know I'm like, like this at the camera, and I do apologize, but I'm just, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to think. I, I can't believe there's a, a niche, like, like group of fragrances from Zara. That's that's amazing. Like, I'm definitely gonna have to check that out. So, uh, thanks a lot, Jay. I really do appreciate that. I'll definitely check them out. Marco F. My question is: I have bought a lot of perfumes lately, and I want to know if if they start the organization process when you open them or they start it. What do you mean, Marco? <laughs> it's a bit late. I'm a bit slow tonight. <laughs> Have you tried Versace Armor Flatafa fragrances? I haven't actually tried those fragrances. I would love to try them. I've, I would really like to try, uh, which Versace fragrance is it, guys? That is a clone of a Valentino fragrance. 
I really can't remember. Because I doubt if I should open them at the same time or not. The D comes in. Oh! I don't know. I don't really know about that, really. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a good question, actually. Maybe someone else knows. Could someone else help me answer Marco's question? That's a really good question. I've never really thought of it like that. I know, Matt, I thought your connection froze with those faces. <laughs> uh. Derege, that's it, Maria. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Derege, yeah, I've always wanted to try that fragrance because being a big lover of vanilla in fragrances, it would be a great scent to try. So I would love to. I would love to, love, love to get that one. Hi, Matt. Do you own Zara Man Gold? I hear it smells like Jean-Paul Gaultier Lamal, but slightly more sophisticated. Excuse me. Slightly more sophisticated with Iris. Uh, no, I don't actually, but I do own another fragrance from Zara that smells like... Um, Ultramal, which is uh, Gourmand Leather. Um, great fragrance. I would highly recommend checking that one out. Um, to me, it's better than Ultramal, because Ultramal is getting discontinued now, apparently. It might already be discontinued. Um, so if you want a great fragrance that smells like Ultramal, you've got to get your hands on Gourmand Leather. Or maybe even that one that you're talking about. Maybe. Sorry guys, my, my phone buggered up there. Uh, JD, keep them in a cool dark place and they'll be fine for ages. Oh yeah, I do. Like right now, my light is on only because I'm doing this live stream, but as soon as this live stream is over, lights off, blinds down. Um, the whole room will pretty much be dark because um, my fragrances are just over here. Yeah, just over there guys. I've got my cabinet and then I've got uh, a three-tier shelf with a few fragrances on there as well, so they're totally protected. I definitely know how to look out for it, look after fragrances. At least I try to think that I do, but um, yeah. Derege is gorgeous. Also try out en Entiba. I will. I definitely will. Like, I've, I've just heard so many good things about these Middle Eastern houses like Latafa and, you know, Rasasi. I've heard so many good things. Like, my good... Th uh, Fellow reviewer, in case you guys don't know him, uh, Steven Sprout, he reviews a lot of fragrances from the House of Derege. So, um, I, you know, I can totally understand why it's, you know, getting a bit of popularity. I mean, I'm definitely going to check it out. I'm going to have to because it's been on my radar for a while and I'm just not doing anything about it. So, come on, Matt. Get your ass into gear. Um, Marco, I have a fragrance that has been going around 25 years, still going strong. Yeah. Yeah, I think it all depends on the way you look after it, you know, if, if it's taken care of, if it's looked after, like from the bottle to the juice, it'll look like you bought it literally just the previous day. You know, I've got a few miniature perfumes. I've got, um, I've got a fragrance by Van Cleef and Arpel called First, which is from the 1970s. And it's still, it's just a miniature, but it still looks really, really good. Really good. Um, Gourmand Leather from Zara is Ultramal clone. Yep. That's right. Uh, it's it's amazing. It's it's a really really good fragrance. I would highly recommend checking it out. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great fragrance, Marco. Kelsey Berwin, Zeus or Tommy Hilfiger, Tommy Mann. Or can you recommend some good cheapies that smell like they should be more expensive than they are? Um <laughs> yeah, I could recommend quite a lot for you actually. Um anything by the house of Jacques Bogart. Um, the House of Jacques Bogart is sensational. It, it's great for people who don't really have a big budget when it comes to fragrances. Like, um, I would highly recommend checking out um, Silver Scent, Bogart Pour Homme, and what, what's the other one? <laughs> um, one Man's Show. I think One Man's Show is a really underrated fragrance. It's, it's definitely a strong scent. It came out in 1980, so it's very strong. But um, Bogart Pour Homme is an amazing fragrance. It's so good. A nice rose tobacco scent. Would highly recommend it. But um, yeah, Jacques Bogart are a great house. Um, what else is there? There's... Uh, let's have a look here. What have I got? Um... Yeah, 
I suppose you could get that one. Um, a fragrance by Zaro actually called Decibel, which doesn't really get a lot of praise, but I think it's a great fragrance. Uh, I would highly recommend you check that one out too. It's, uh, you know, it's also a great bottle design as well. It looks like a handheld microphone, so it's, it's really good. It's got like a really nice smell to it. It's got cinnamon and stuff, but it gives off a sort of licorice vibe. Um, great fragrance. Uh, I would highly recommend you check that one out. It's really, really good. What's your favorite gourmand scent? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, gourmand scent? I would probably say something maybe like, um, well, I really like Salvatore Ferragamo's Womo, how it kind of um, has that tiramisu note. Uh, love that. Love that note um, in that fragrance. It's it's a really good one. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't really follow gourmands, if I'm honest with you. I, you know, I don't really... Um, I don't really wear much gourmand fragrances, if I'm honest with you. But yeah. What else we got here? Have you compared Zara Impact Masculine to Anmugla Cologne? I think it's because they are made by the same perfumer, but I think the second one is is more complex. Oh, okay. No, I actually haven't. Like, I've, I've heard of Impact Masculine. Um, but I didn't know it was actually a Mugler Cologne clone. That's pretty impressive. In fact, I actually own... I mentioned this one in my last live stream, actually. I actually own um, a fragrance called Tokyo. I think it's called Tokyo Japan, literally, um, by Zara. Um, it was only, like, five pounds or something. It was really cheap. And that smells very, very strongly of Mugler Cologne. Like Mugler, Col Mugler Cologne, Original Vetiver, you know, those fragrances, it's literally like that, but it's very, very weak. Um, that's the only one, really, I've really come across that smells like that. But I didn't know that Impact Masculine was a, you know, a, a Mugler Cologne clone. That's pretty impressive. Um, I'll definitely have to check those fragrances out, though, especially the, uh, the one that smells like Aventus. It's my birthday next month. Uh, what perfume do you suggest I check out and maybe purchase? Ooh. Okay. There's two fragrances. But they are a little bit on the pricey side, but I'll say them anyway, then I'll give you some cheaper recommendations. The first one is Mon Galan. Um, if you checked it out, it's the newest perfume for women by the House of Galan. Amazing. It's so good. It's a little bit on the sweet side, but such a good fragrance. Would highly recommend you check that one out, Natalie. Another one is the new Thierry Mugler Aura. Smelt it yesterday, fell in love. Honest to God, like, it, it blew my mind how good it was. Like, it's definitely the same type of fragrance as, like, the likes of Angel and Alien. A very heavy fragrance, but the smell of it is just insane. It's, 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 del it's so good, it's delicious, it's amazing. Any positive word suits that fragrance down to a T. And it's, it's got like the note of rhubarb in there, so it gives it a nice sort of touch. It's a beautiful fragrance. I would highly recommend you check those ones out. But a really nice cheap fragrance um, that I've noticed is um, the price has been going down for it, especially here in the UK. You might want to check it out in like Debenhams and stuff. Is the uh, Paco Rabanne Black Excess for women. Um, beautiful fragrance. A friend of mine who I went to college with actually used to wear that perfume and it smelled so good on her. So... Might be worth you checking that one out. Uh, I'll try and think of some more ideas as I'm as I'm going along. <laughs> uh, Rob, we need to protest to bring Balenciaga Pour On back. Yes! Yes, we do. The fact that it's discontinued still annoys me to this day. My favourite fragrance of all time, discontinued. What a load of crap. Nah, it happens, but, you know, it's... It's a shame. I mean, it, it wouldn't be able to survive in you know, this day and age, because the ingredients that are actually in Balenciaga Pour Homme would be illegal <laughs> to this day. I, I, it actually features real oak moss in that fragrance, and ambergris, I think, is also in that fragrance, and that is real as well. So, yeah, I think that's what gives it its, you know, amazing smell, to be honest, though, because there's just nothing synthetic about it. It's just great. Uh, JD, Marco, Impact Masculine smells nothing like it, mate. It's more like a CK1 type scent. Hmm. Okay. Fair enough. I own it. You own Black Excess? Um, Zara Accord number one is nice and is not expensive. I really like Zara Accord number three, I think it is. The number three Woody. Uh, Red Lessons actually reviewed it with uh, Carlos at Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Um, I, think it's, I, I think it's actually a clone of uh, Balenciaga B, which I've heard is, you know, it's very close. I've smelt it once, but it was quite weak on my skin. 
um, the Zara fragrance, I mean. It just wasn't very long-lasting, so I don't really know. I might end up checking it out, but, uh, yeah, I, I love hearing recommendations like this, guys. Please keep it up. It's awesome. <laughs> um, I'll put it on my list. Oh, where are we going, where are we going, where are we going? Natalie, how about Black Opium Floral Shock? Oh, Floral Shock. I really like the original Black Opium. Is that the coffee one? It's very strong on the coffee. If it is, then that is a beautiful fragrance. I haven't actually checked out the Floral Shock, though. If that is the name of the fragrance, I don't know. Put on my list. Awesome. Uh, Keith, right now I own Ted Lapidus Porum, Bogart by Jacques Bogart, and Puig Quorum. Great fragrances. Do you have any recommendations for another powerhouse to add in my collection? Absolutely, Keith. Um, I would definitely check out... Um, I would check out a fragrance called Paul Louis by Oscar de la Renta. Uh, it smells a little bit to me like a sweeter version of Chanel Antaeus. Um, but if you love powerhouse fragrances, there's no reason at all why you shouldn't like it. It's an amazing scent. I would recommend you check that one out. Um, I would also recommend, um... See, there's just so many. I'm trying to think of a, a good one for you to go for. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, Santos de Cartier is a great powerhouse fragrance. Um, very elegant scent. I actually picked my bottle up for like 40 quid when it was reduced from like 70, so great price. So if you can find that one on the cheap, that is a great fragrance. It's so good, it's so elegant, but definitely a powerhouse fragrance. It has that strong masculine edge to it. I mean, it did come out in 81, so it's you know, still an old fragrance. So I would highly recommend you check those ones out. Marco, that is my advice only. I don't know if they are clones. Oh, okay, okay. Favorite Gourmand scent is Salvatore Ferragamo Womo, Pure Tonka, Pure Havan, and Tone Indetermine. Tone Indetermine is awesome. I forgot to mention that one before, actually. It's a great fragrance. I get a sort of like biscuit smell out of that, uh, like a cookie smell. Not biscuit, what am I thinking? Like a cookie smell, um, kind of like popcorn. That's the type of smell I get out of that, but I love it. It's a great fragrance. Pure Havan, love Pure Havan. It's definitely my favorite, amen. Love it. Just don't have it. <laughs> Natalie, also Mongolan and Prada La Femme. Yeah, Mongolan. Say, a great fragrance. It's a new fragrance, but it's really, really good. Thank you for mentioning that, Simi. Because she, she's right. It is a great fragrance. Would highly recommend it. Zara Vibrant Leather is nice indeed, but the opening goes away quickly. That's the Creed Aventus clone one, right? Yeah. Uh, I haven't checked. I've smelt it once. Was very, very close to um, Aventus, but the only reason I didn't buy it is because when I sprayed it on my hand, uh, it faded from my skin really, really quickly. I don't know if that was just because it was a dodgy tester ball. I don't know, but whatever. Um, bad performance for Mongolan. Really? Oh, wow. I've got a tester of it, and it lasts forever on my skin, so... That's quite disappointing. Uh, Marco F. Speaking of Thierry Mugler, which ones are your favorite? What do you think about Cryptomint? Haven't tried Cryptomint. In fact, it's not even around here in the UK. Every time I go into the department store, I always go up to the Thierry Mugler counter to ask them about the Cryptomint, and they've never heard of it. Beats me. Like, they've never heard of it. Like, I've asked them every time I've gone in there, and it's just, it's the same thing. Oh, we've never heard of that fragrance. Come on, you work for the company. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's just not around in the UK yet, but I would love to smell it. I've heard so many good things. Like, I, get, I do get jealous when I see all the re like reviewers reviewing it, and I'm just like, hey. <laughs> nah, it's cool. But it's hard to find. It is really hard to find, so. Matt, do you own Versace Lum? As it's on offer in Debenhams, 22 pound. Beautiful old school fragrance, yes. I do own it, and I actually spent 22 fragrance on it. 22 fragrance? Uh, I actually did spend 22 pound on it uh, about two years ago. It is a gorgeous fragrance. Uh, that is actually a good powerhouse to go for. Um, sorry, who was it that uh, asked? Oh yes, uh, Keith. I'm sorry, I forgot your name there. Uh, yes, that is another good one to go for, uh, which is Versace Lone. Great, great fragrance to go for. It's, it's so good. Love it. Absolutely love it. So. Thank you so much for recommending that to me, Michael. <laughs> I really appreciate that, buddy. Uh, try Rich Leather from Zara for an Aventus clone. The best is either Armoff Club to Meet Intense Man and Pineapple Vintage Intense. Yeah, see, I need to try all these. I really do. And I mean, I'm like I said, I'm not a big fan of Aventus clones, if I'm honest with you. 
I mean, again, I can appreciate them because I, I love fragrance so much, but there's too many clones for them now. It's getting a bit silly, don't you think? <laughs> um, Natalie, I already have my eye on that Paco. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, pardon me. Um, I already have my eye on that Paco Rabanne one. Okay, awesome. It's a great fragrance. Would highly recommend it, Natalie. It's so good. Rich Lever is amazing, but performance sucks so bad, it's sad. <sighs> See. Code number three, I have it, but I still have to open it. Come on, Marco. Get cracking. <laughs> we need to see what you think of these fragrances. Uh, David G, you reviewed quite a few Al Rahabs. I bought a few after your reviews. But have you ever tried Al Haramein and or Swiss Arabian? No, I haven't. Uh, Al Rahab is the only Arabian house that I've smelled fragrances from. So, no, I would love to try other ones, though I just, you know, haven't ever got around to it. So, hi Natalie, try Armani C Rose. Ooh. There's one for you, Natalie. Uh, JD, good powerhouse is Encre Noir. See, Encre Noir, there's another fragrance I haven't tried, yet it's so inexpensive. Um, yeah, I, I need to check out these fragrances, like, I, I just do. Um, excuse me. Rob Ripper, uh, here's a good tip for everyone. Go to antique shops. I found many vintage gems in them without the inflated prices. Wow, Rob, you've got the right idea, my friend. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like, Rob is certainly right, guys. Antique stores are fantastic. You really do find some treasures in there. Seriously, it's like a treasure hunt. Once you go in there, you find one perfume, you have to find another. And then you just end up finding loads of them. In fact, I actually own quite a lot of antique finds. Um, in fact, if you guys go into my playlist, um, my fragrance map playlist, you'll find... Um, a set of videos called by Antique Collection. Give them a watch if you want to see some fragrances that I found in some antique stores. Some of the fragrances that I found are pretty cool, actually. I didn't think I'd ever find them. But uh, yeah, Rob's absolutely right. Like, go to them. They're awesome. I already own C, not keen on C Rose. Sorry. HM, good evening, Matt. What is your thoughts about the original Drakkar in DN? Also about Hugo 1995. What's DN? <laughs> hey Ryan, what's up buddy? Damn, I missed it, your first stream. Oh, no worries, you're here now. I appreciate that. How are you doing anyway? I hope you're doing good. Uh, hey Matt, if you're looking for Cryptomint, it's available in the perfume shop now and you can- Is it? <sighs> right, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go. <laughs> in fact, we're meant to be going out tomorrow, so I'm gonna make sure I go and check it out. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. Uh, Marco, I live in France, so I can find it quite easily for me. From the tester, it smells like chocolate mint. The opening, obviously. Ooh, that sounds good. Sounds pretty good, actually. Have you tried Dakar Al Rahab? No, I haven't actually tried that HM just yet. Um, would really like to, though. I've heard some good things about it. Cryptomint is available at the perfume shop. I didn't even know, see? Like, like, ugh, I've been wanting to smell it for ages. I guess I just need to get out more instead of being a bloody hermit. <laughs> But uh, yeah, thanks for letting me know, guys. I'm definitely going to have to check them out now. Uh, Keith Armani Oporum is a must-have. Yes, it is. I own a vintage bottle of that, and it's incredible. It's so good. Uh, JD. Wow, never thought of antique shops for fragrances. Honestly. Honestly. Yes, Jay. You need to go. You find so many vintage fragrances. Mostly perfumes, though, I've found. Although you will find... Uh, some men's fragrances. If you want to find men's fragrances, yeah, unfortunately I've noticed there's a lot of Avon fragrances in antique stores, especially in the um, in the 1970s. Avon used to produce some like little, like like really beautiful bottle designs. Actually, like like shaped like people. Like there's a one I've seen with of a child holding a balloon, and it's so beautiful. Yet it could be any Avon fragrance that's inside it. It's just the way that that they used to decant their fragrances in the 70s and 60s, but. It's incredible. I actually own quite a few of them. Um, Al Haramein are another level to Al Rahab. Something else to add to your growing list of things to try. This fragrance journey is never ending, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it certainly is, David. Like, I mean, I think I've probably got like, I mean, I've got a list on my computer. Um, I think I've got about 3,000 fragrances on there that I still need. 3,000. Mind blow. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> Uh, Dracar Noir. 
Oh, Dracar Noir. Of course, DN. I'm sorry. Um, love Dracar Noir. I just don't have it. Uh, I still need to own a bottle of it, even though it's like a really popular fragrance. Although I do own quite a few uh, clones of Dracar Noir. I own... Um, which ones? I own a fragrance by Lamani called Lamani Pour Homme, which is a, actually a really nice fragrance. Um, I also own... Um, Caesar's Man, which is Caesar's Palace, you know, the, the famous casino in Las Vegas. It's their actual fragrance, the men's fragrance. It's really good. Um, and a, another one that I own is English Blazer. Another good fragrance. Smells a lot like Dracar Noir, but I will end up getting my, my hands on it. It's, it's a great, great fragrance. Um, well, we will go like crazy now. <laughs> Antique stores visited around the world now. Unfortunately, there isn't many antique stores in the UK. That's the only problem. Like, whenever I go to the States, I'm, I'm mostly in antique stores. I go to antique stores more than department stores or Sephora or anywhere, really. So, you know. Um, watch the surge of fragheads on antique shops around the world, Matt. On the, around the world. All thanks to this great video. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's so, like, whenever you go to antique stores, especially in the States, they're really empty. Now I can just imagine them all filling up. I hope they do, because um, they're great little shops. You really find some amazing things in there. Uh, Marco, I would I would love to start my own channel. What would you suggest me to do? Um, well, I made a video uh, called on, you know, how to be a fragrance reviewer. And it, I'm basically just throwing a few points and, you know, a little bit of advice on how you can do it. and. I think the one thing that people do wrong when it comes to reviewing fragrances on YouTube, and it's, well, it's not just reviewing fragrances, it's anything, is people try to be like other people. And that is just an eh, eh, no, you can't do that. You, you have to be yourself. If you don't be yourself, people are going to notice that and they're just not going to watch you, you know? And I'm not just saying that, like, because, you know, a lot of you guys have said, wow, you know, you're really like yourself, you know, you, you, you really know how to be yourself. And that... You know, that really touches my heart. Like, I really do appreciate that when people say that, you know. Because that is literally, yeah, I don't try to be like anyone else. I try to be myself. And that's more, that's what my advice would be. I think if you're going to do a fragrance video, especially your first video, um, I would review a fragrance which is quite popular. I would start off with a really popular fragrance so that people will notice it. Because, yeah, if a fragrance is popular, it is going to get more views, let's be honest. You know, people are going to look at it and think... Oh wow, here we go, yeah. He's reviewing um, La Nuit de L'Homme by Yves Saint Laurent. I have to watch this, you know? If, if you're going to review a fragrance which isn't really popular, then people are just going to be like, well, no. Because when I started out, the first fragrance I reviewed, like two or three years ago, was Armani Code. And it didn't really get a lot of views. I mean, you know, I think I, within the first two months, I got like 50 subscribers, which to me was amazing. Absolutely amazing. I mean, I'm still... I mean, I'm doing much better than what I did now, thanks to you, beautiful people. Um, so I'm really grateful for that. But yeah, like, if you want to become a reviewer, just just be yourself. Seriously, like, I would totally watch you, Marco, if you did it. Totally. I would do anything to help you get out there, buddy. Just, you know, whenever you're ready, buddy. It's, it's all about whenever you're ready. Don't really throw yourself into the deep end. Uh, it's about just being comfortable and uh, doing it in a time where you're really feeling good, so... Like, whenever I do a video, I'm, I've am i got to make sure that I'm in the right frame of mind, that I'm feeling good in myself, and I'm not feeling like crap or whatever. Because, you know, we all have, you know, our, our bad days, you know, it's, it's normal. We're human beings after all, so, yeah. That's what I would do, buddy. That's what I would definitely do, Marco. Definitely. Uh, what's the best Versace that you've tried? Versace Man, my friend, from 2003. The, the best Versace. Could be the best Versace. I mean, I love The Dreamer, but... Versace Man is just on another level. It's insane. It's so good. It's so, so nice. In fact, it actually reminds me of Versace Pour Homme Eau de Noir. So if you uh, want to check that out, then I would, because it's really, really good. A uh, few more questions now. Well, not questions, just comments, I should say. Oh, by the way, it's just Mugler now, not Tiali Mugler. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, they basically changed the name. Yeah, it's a bit weird, I know, but whatever. Uh, you've often talked about Nikos sculpture in your vids. Can you describe it in, in three words for me and compare it to a designer fragrance for me, please, Matt? Yeah, no problem. Um, sculpture on. Cedar wood bomb. <laughs> well, not cedar wood. It's more of a cedar bomb. Uh, clean and quite versatile, really. 
Uh, oh, even though I would wear it in the summer, it is quite a versatile scent, but a very good scent. And it gets compared a lot to the Dreamer by Versace, and I can certainly see that. I mean, it's like the Dreamer without that tobacco and rose. It's a very, it's, it's a unique scent, but it's a really good one. Very good for the price. I only paid like 11 quid for my 100 mil, so... Yeah, I would, I would certainly get it. It's a cedarwood bomb. It's clean. It's refreshing. Um, I would suppose. I, I guess it's a little bit unique as well. Um, but a great fragrance. I would highly recommend it. Seriously. Um, Marco, I could start with Zara. Which one, addictive? Le Nuit de l'Homme, Pure Havane. Yeah, totally. I think Rich One Addictive would be a great starter because obviously with the hype that it's getting recently, totally, totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Sorry, I was about to say something. Um, yeah, totally. I would um, totally start with that fragrance, buddy. Totally. Yeah, totally. You should definitely do that, Marco. Uh, where are your fra favorite places to go buy fragrance? Do you prefer online shops or retail where you can take the box home on the day? Can you recommend good places to buy in the UK? Uh, not really. I mean, sometimes it depends. Like, I, I, I enjoy going online to get fragrances. Um, although sometimes, if I mean, it's almost like if I'm there and I see it, I'll get it, you know? If I find a good deal online, then I'll go online and get it, you know? But I suppose it doesn't really bother me. Sometimes I do like to buy a fragrance, then get home and then rip into it. And, you know, I do, lo I do like doing first impression videos, but um, it depends on the fragrance, of course. You know, it definitely depends on the fragrance. And you are so welcome, Jay. No problem at all. Now, guys, I just want to say a huge thank you once again for coming into this live stream. Um, my phone is on like 1%, so I wanna quickly say goodbye. Not in a rude way, of course. You guys, I could talk with you guys all day. You know, I just, I like to keep my live streams at least an hour long. I will end up doing them much longer in the near future. Um, just, yeah, you guys are absolutely incredible. Thank you so, so much for all of the support. It means so much to me, guys, seriously. Like, if I could meet you all in person, you would all get the biggest hug from me, seriously. <laughs> I know I sound really soppy and kind of like, oh, shut up, Matt. But seriously, it's the truth. You guys have built my channel so much. You built it literally from the fucking ground. And I appreciate it so, so much. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourselves, guys. Keep smelling good. And I'll see you all in the next, well, the next video. So you guys, take care of yourselves. And thank you so, so much.